Hey, what's going on everyone? Dave here with some more Crash Team Racing. We got two cups left, yellow and purple. We're getting right on into it. We just had a crazy victory last time with Pura being annoying and like me getting fifth in the last race, somehow winning after that. Go figure, man. But nevertheless, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. We got more coming in and hit that bell notification so that you know everything that's going to be coming out right after this. I'm glad we didn't have trouble getting into this level because if you remember, the game froze on me last time when I went into Dingo Canyon. All right, no one's <gasps> Cortex Crate Stealer trying to do his thing. But I, thwart I thwarted him. Yes, I got the polar bear. All right, and let's get Cortex Crate Stealer as he stole my apple crate just now. <laughs> I love his face, his voice. I mean, I love his fo his face too, but you know. Oh god, I see you, Tiny. Oh, does he? <laughs> Did he fall? Did he fall? Oh, he fell! I sabotaged that kitty cat. It feels weird calling Tiny Tiger a kitty cat, but he is. Ain't nobody gonna mess with me. I got rockets in my head. <laughs> Alrighty, oh no, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna hurt! <laughs> oh, poor me! Okay, okay, crash, bump me, why don't you? Goodbye. Alright. Oh, oh, take what? What do you got, son? Oh, I hear you, kitty cat. Oh, kitty cat. Oh, kitty cat. Okay, I'll get, I guess I'll get Cortex. Oh, I missed! Oh, darn, I wanted to knock him off the ledge, <gasps> but I failed. I am a misery. I'm a, I am a misery. Wow. Okay, whatever. Sometimes you just go a little crazy and kitty clips through the canyon. Kitty clips through the canyon. Alliteration much? Get him. <laughs> Fun times with my demon mask. Or demon shaman mask? I don't know what Aku Aku and Uka Uka are based off of. I think they're based on Africa. Although they could, I could be wrong. It could be like Mesopot Mesopotamia. It could be, whoa. It could be, I don't even know. Uh, Mesoamerica is what I was, what was on the tip of my tongue. All right, you know, Aztec, Inca, Mayan. Never delays. Actually, it'd probably be whatever Papu Papu is. Who seems to be a mix of all of that. He's like a mix of. Aztec, Incan, African, shamanistic, Egyptian, not really Egyptian, but you know. Again, I, I never really played Crash 1 and 2. I've only played Crash Bandicoot... Oh, darn. I've only played Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, which is really weird. Uh, a little bit of Crash Bash. Only, I only played that one with friends. I never owned it. And then, of course, Crash Team Racing, because this one's this game's awesome. But yeah, what, what about you guys? What's your history with Crash? That's a that's a good question to ask because now we got the Crash bundle coming up for those of you guys who are fortunate enough to own a PS4. Not me, unfortunately. But I would love to play the games remastered, so if any of you guys are looking forward to that, let me know. But yeah, I'm curious. Did you guys play a lot of Crash growing up? I was a big Spyro guy. Ooh, I stole the crate. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Were you a big uh, Crash Bandicoot person or... Or Spyro, or like, was PS1 even your thing? Maybe you guys were N64 only. I had a PlayStation 1 and an N64, so I played a lot of PlayStation, and never much Crash, but a lot of Spyro, and of course I was a big N64 kiddo. Tiny, you stole my crate. Oh my god, everyone is faster than me! What the heck? Okay, well, at least I'm juiced. Well, I'm gonna get a crazy item and get through this. Okay, fine. Everybody just hang out in the mud there. I think it's because Engine doesn't have that much... that very good... He doesn't have a very good top speed, but his acceleration is crazy once he picks up momentum. Get me get the crate! Yeah! I got it! I was surprised I got it, but I guess... Let's paint it forward after everyone's gotten crates stolen from me. Oh, that's not gonna hit- that's gonna hit no one, unless it hit Crash just now. Wow, it did! Oh no, I got hit in the mud! I don't like getting hit in the mud. Getting hit in the mud makes me mad. I don't have my top speed, and I'm in the mud. It makes me a little mad. And also, this level is so big, I don't like it. I don't like it, Sam. I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Oh, <laughs> David. Yo, <laughs> that, a little bit of Darkful 99 is coming back. Guys, remember when I would go crazy? Oh, those of you guys who were alive around for Darkful 99, how many of you guys 
actually knew me when I was Dark Fool 99. I know a lot of you guys discovered me now recently, but if any of you guys were around for Dark Fool 99, like, what do you miss the most about Dark? Oh God, actually, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have you guys. Oh my God, this missile's crazy. <laughs> you weaved around my TNT. I shouldn't ask that question because honestly, the answers might make me tear up a little bit because I miss that channel so much. I was such a just. I was just such a dumb, immature kid. And just because, like, the prospect of not making money, because I, I ran into, like, copyright stuff and all that, just because, like, the, the prospect of not making money for all my hard work and stuff, I was so angsty at the time, and it just, like, it was a bad cocktail and a bad timing thing. And it just, it got me so angry and agitated and anxious and frustrated and more adjectives here. And I, and I just, like, I raged out and I just deleted it. Wow, he got hit the same spot I did with a bomb. And I got so agitated, I just deleted my channel. I literally rage quit YouTube, and I never backed up any of that good stuff. And I'm, I'm super happy that I've gotten to replay some of those games and was able to, you know, create new memories with these games because the old ones are unfortunately lost. But I still miss those, and, you know, so much work and love went into that, and I feel like a lot of it died with YouTube monetization. You know, like, the love, the community. Remember, like... I would do collabs with Masay and Nella, who's like huge right now. Uh, not huge, but you know. Um, oh darn! Oh, I can't activate him. Uh, Masay and Nella. Oh my God! The Lightning Spirits 78. Kevin J 2010 or 20, 20 whatever the heck. I, I think it's 2010. Yeah. We would make jokes when it stopped being 2010. Oh my God! Ah, uh, memories. Memories. Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make it depressing, but I do miss I do miss Darkful 99. And so, if any of you guys had fond memories with Darkful 99, let me know. I'm super, super, always down to hear them. Oh darn that! That put me in a funk. Let's get let's get in a good mood again. Come on, like I'm winning these races. That's incredible. And I'm so grateful to you guys who have joined in for Darkful Dave because I might have not run into you guys like as Darkful 99. So I appreciate you guys too. It's just an episode of gratitude. Let's let's make that a thing, cause I don't get to express gratitude for you guys often, but you know I really I really do. You know I I really do feel that with you guys. All oh, right, hot air skyway. I love this one. And I hope you guys under you know know that it's hard, cause like I always put on this persona. I'm always a host. I'm like hosting this. I'm hosting a show basically where I just play video games and f around. And you know, it's fun. We all have a great time, and sometimes I think it's just- Oh! Yes, I made it finally. I think sometimes, you know, you get a little in your own- I get a little in my own character, because that's a thing. Even like, when I used to- when I was doing theater, and like, I still like doing these games. Like, I love doing improv, for example. And so, when I would do improv with my friends and stuff, and, you know, semi-professionally, of course, semi-seriously. Oh, darn, I almost activated it. Semi-seriously doing improv, I would, you know, you, we would always understand that the, the people, you, you're never, improv's cool because it's like, you're, you're yourself and you're not. You're a character and you're not. And when you do improv, you're basically, my high school theater professor described this really well. You play an exaggerated version of yourself. And that's kind of the zone I enter when I do Let's Play videos like this as well. You see, I, I'm i not myself, but I'm also not not myself, if that makes any sense. Kitty cat, I hate you. Get it? Oh, I got him! Oh, no, uh, I want the other way. I, I, wasn't, I didn't think I was going to make that. Man, these races are neck and neck, I tell you. So, yeah, and I'm like, so there's a part of it that is me when I record, and then there's a part of me that's not. And I guess, like, today I'm just a little bit more me than I am mm, not host me, you know? Like, performative me is a lot a lot different. Oh, knock your cat- oh, okay, yeah, I was gonna sworn if I knocked the cat off, that would've been great. Alright, whoa, don't, don't hit me. Okay, cool. Crash has been hitting a lot of my TNTs lately. Okay, go! Oh, yes! I actually wanted to hit the cat and not Tiny. Excellent. Oh, whoa! Doing my moves. 
stealing my crates! <laughs> Cortex crate stealer. He's actually the, the top contender this cup. It's cool. Ah! Oh, I got a got a boost, and he stole my crate again. Cortex crate stealer, always doing that. Oh, I'm glad I did not get that missile. Cortex crate stealer, three in a row. Not cool, bro. Not cool. Oh, darn. I could have made the other one, probably. Alright. Ooh, yes, fire. Oh, come on. How did that miss? Cortex Great Stealer! What the heck? That's like the fourth time he's done that. Oh, no, you stay behind me. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just steal first, okay? I really wish I had a rear view on just to make sure I stole his crate. Get Cortex! Oh, okay, fine. No, I want Tiny to win! Or, I mean, not win, but I want Tiny to beat Cortex. Alright, let's see if this gets... Oh, that got Cortex! Sweet! Oh god, he's close. Oh, whoop. Okay, whatever. Take that! Cortex? <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna get that one. It was a little on the edge. But awesome! But yeah, I hope you guys really do understand that I... I love you guys, and I hope you guys do well with whatever it is you're working on, because I know YouTube tends to attract, like, more creatives, like, the kind of person who would sit down and watch this Let's Play as episode 20, whatever it is. I'm sure you guys, like, have some creative bone in your body, and I hope you guys do really well with whatever you're doing. And even if you don't, like, even if you're, like, doing physics or math or anything like that, like, that's awesome. Like, I, I don't have... I mean, it's I can't say I don't have the brain for that, but, like, I... Because that's selling myself a little short, but it's not—it's it, nothing I could commit to, you know. I, it definitely takes a certain kind of mind to be able to do that stuff and enjoy it. That's a funny thing about me. When I was in school, I would always like high school. I'm talking about. Oh come on, really? And and he stole my crate. When I was in high school, I always had the aptitude for math and science, and you know, it came really naturally to me. And I even did a little bio when I started college. And the thing is, like, I didn't love English until college. I became a good writer in high school, but I didn't really appreciate that gift until college. And all the, like, and I became so much more creative in college, too. And I realized I might not have the aptitude for being artistic or entertaining or funny, but I could sure as hell try. And I like to think I do okay. I know it wasn't anything I had a knack for growing up. But honestly, like, you guys... I think I'm living proof of this. Not to, like, toot my own horn or anything. But, like, if you ever, like, want to do something and you feel like, you know, maybe you're meant to do something else because everyone's telling you that, oh, you should do this other thing or whatever. Like, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, in case you can tell, like, I'm a little Indian. So, <laughs> uh... Of course there was that pressure, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be some, you know, high-performing, white-collar professional. <laughs> Take another one, Tiny. And, or be just be a sadist who shoots missiles at big tigers. Oh. But, yeah, the whole thing is, I was good at math and science. I was not passionate about math and science, so... I made a decision when I realized I didn't want to be a psychiatrist anymore. I was going to stop taking biology classes, and then I would just explore. So I took philosophy classes, I took white collar crime as a class, I took psych, I took media studies, I took the whole nine yards, and I fell in love with performing again, because I did musical theater in high school, and I fell in love with performing again. This time, I became engrossed in the film world. And honestly, like, after doing both for a little bit, I like the film community a lot more than the theater community. I have huge respect. Mad props to you theater folk out there. I love it. And I love doing theater, too. Like, I would still do a show here and there. Because, you know, live performance has its own thing. And it, it has great things that you can work on, like projection, stage presence, posing, power posing, and all that stuff. And went a little southern there. And definitely diction. I mean, you have you have to have diction for film acting too, but... Again, I'm more interested in producing, but of course I like performing. As you can tell, that's why I do these. And... You know... Film I liked because it just felt more... Dynamic. I felt like... And you know... Whoa, that was close. 
theater set design is super artistic. I love it. Like, I remember I live in New York. I saw Spider-Man the Musical, and that set design was crazy good. <laughs> I, I. I, I, I have to say, that set design was amazing. And I just, there's something I love about dressing a film set a lot more. And I like the look of camera angles. I like the kind of things that camera angles can convey with actors that they can't entirely do. That they're a little limited with on a stage, you know? But anyway, I'm getting beside the point. Uh, if you guys, and I know some of you guys are out there. If you feel like you're a natural at something and you're not passionate about it, I encourage you to not lose touch of that. Like, the fact that I was good at math and science means I'm great with, like, budgeting and planning and stuff like that. Sticking to deadlines, that disciplined nature is still in there. It's why I love martial arts. You know, there's there's science and geometry in martial arts. And, whoo, 16-minute episode. Dang, these cups are getting long. But I, I am going to do... I'm going to make each cup its own episode, of course. But yeah, if you get, any of you guys out there are good at something and not passionate about it, don't feel like you ever have to do that thing for anyone. You don't owe it to anyone, and it's easy to feel like you owe it to your parents, you owe it to your teachers, or whoever is invested in you at the time. But ultimately, you're going to be responsible for your destiny at the end of the day when you're 40 years old and living on your own and whatnot, and I want for you to make sure you're not living for anyone else but yourself. You can do things, you know, like, don't become a people pleaser. You can do things with consideration of others into mind, but ultimately you have to take care of yourself, because that's self-love, and you can't love anybody else if you don't love yourself first. Well, dang, that got heavy. <laughs> we got the purple gem cup up next, but I really enjoyed this episode and talking to you guys and being real for once. So, leave a like on this video if you like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. For now, this is Dave out. Peace out. Bye-bye.